Hey guys, check this out. We are here with the Cupra Tavascan. It's their new EV SUV coming to Australia this year. And it's actually a very exciting EV. It is based on their MEB platform, which shares with a lot of vehicles like the ID4, the ID5, which means it's got a lot of power. It looks incredible. The interior space is seriously one of the nicest I've seen in any Volkswagen product, at least in terms of design. And I'm also going to be able to tell you some of the really impressive stats that this thing has, including my speculation on its price. So let's talk about it. Alrighty, let's talk about the way that the Tavascan looks. So first of all, it's not small. In fact, it's 4.64 meters long and the wheelbase is just under 2.8 meters, which means that it's quite a large vehicle. Check out these really cool headlights, actually very bright LEDs there as well. The grille is mostly plugged up. In fact, this thing with its design, with its active aero here as well, has a drag coefficient of 0.26, which means that this thing is more slippery in the air than a Cupra Born which is a smaller hatch, which I think is pretty cool and very impressive. You have the Cupra badge here with some copper elements around there. That is, of course, the Cupra touch. It's the copper look. And I do love it finished in this paint. By the way, that badge there does light up too. Cupra badge there as well. Now, we will check out the side in a second, but you're going to be able to get this in two different trims. There's the Endurance trim, which is a rear-wheel drive only. It has about 210 kilowatt of power and 545 newton meters of torque with a range of 534 kilometers on the WLTP, so actually quite impressive. The top of the range, which is what we're looking at now, is the VZ, and that has a dual motor setup with a total output of 250 kilowatt with 545 newton meters of torque to the rear motor and 134 newton meters of torque to the front. So that means that it is rear wheel drive bias. It's also got a 4951 weight distribution, so this thing should be quite tail happy and very much a driver's car, even in the all wheel drive, at least that's what we think. And that will have a range of about 499 kilometers. Now, both of those cars do come with a 77 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. It's a 400 volt architecture, which means that it can charge it up to 135 kilowatt in DC fast charging. So not necessarily the absolute best, but it's still relatively quick. And of course, with a zero to 100 of 5.5 seconds, it actually should be very, very quick indeed. Let's check out the side. All right, so coming to the side, you're gonna see these pretty massive 21 inch wheels with some copper highlights. They're also wrapped in Bridgestone Taranza tires, which are actually a pretty good tire there as well. You also get a 360 camera here with some blacked out side mirrors. You also have a very tinted privacy glass, which is really cool. And I do love this. It's just such a cool, swoopy, coopy. And really that's one of the biggest reasons that you would buy a Cupra. They know they can't necessarily compete on price right down to the bottom like you'll find with Chinese manufacturers. What they can do is design and emotion. That's what they're going for, emotion. And it does look very, very beautiful indeed. Definitely getting a lot of Porsche Cayenne vibes off of this one. Let's check out the bum. All right. Let's talk about the rump derriere of this thing because it is really beautiful. I love the triangle design here in the back of the lights. This is Cupra's new design language and we're going to be seeing that on their new models coming out as well, like the facelifted Formentor. It's also got a bit of a V there, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure that's what the Vinfast VF8 has on its car, which is kind of interesting. But that car is a complete sales flop. You have a Cupra badge there that lights up. Very cool. Cupra spelt out there, the VZ badge too. Got a very aggressive diffuser down the bottom. And I really do like this lip spoiler there as well. Let's check out what it can fit inside of its bum. So actually a really large amount of space. Very, very surprising. So as it is currently, you get 540 liters of boot space, which for an SUV under 4.7 meters is actually pretty damn good, especially an electric car. You've also got a bit of underfloor storage there as well and then a little bit more uh, underfloor storage but you do have a subwoofer because this thing has a Sennheiser sound system which does sound pretty good you could also drop the second row and get a bit more space as well so yeah very very impressive in terms of its packaging you wouldn't expect it for a coupe SUV but it does well let's check out the interior Alrighty, let's talk about the interior now of the Cupra Tavascan what's it like well first of all build quality oh does sound pretty damn good. So the first thing you're gonna be uh, wowed by is the design because it is wild. Um, some might even call it wacky, but I truly love it. You touch around, you have soft touch materials absolutely everywhere, like you would expect from any sort of electric car. It's all vegan and a lot of it's recycled. Even these seats were like 50% at least recycled. They are very nice, by the way, very, very supportive. And they've got cool copper detailing within them as well. You can't not notice this as well, this spine, they call it, that comes into the center. It does does look almost quite intimidating, but in a really cool way. I actually think it looks fantastic. Ambient lighting absolutely everywhere, including the doors. And even when you open the door, 
it will turn red to warn people that the door is open. Just really cool attention to detail and safety stuff there. You have this very nice leather steering wheel. It's got touch capacitive buttons on it, but they seem to be better placed than a lot of other Volkswagen Group products, which is good. It means you're not gonna accidentally whack it. And you've got your drive mode selectors here, your normal drive modes, and then you have your Cooper button, which puts the car into its ultimate performance mode. Up in front of you, you get this very small like motorcycle display. It is a digital instrument cluster. It doesn't show a huge amount of information, but on other Cooperas I've driven with a similar screen, it's actually pretty good. It's very minimalistic and just works well. Unlike this display here, which it works well, but it's certainly not minimalistic. It's 15 inches, which is absolutely massive. You do get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is pretty fantastic. You've got your climate controls there. And thankfully Volkswagen Group have listened to feedback. We do have backlit temperature controls here and volume controls as well. It's all touch sensitive, but because it's backlit, it's going to work absolutely fine. But yeah, this display is super duper snappy, even though that this is a pre-production. In fact, we actually weren't supposed to get this car this year. We're getting it at the same time as Europe because all of these are built in China and the Chinese factory is apparently really, really fast. Uh, and they've been able to get this car homologated for Australia. So we're actually gonna get it at the same time as Europe, which for any Volkswagen Group product, is unreal. You really don't often see that back to this car though. You also get a massive heads up display. Like it's absolutely huge right up in front of you and very customizable. In fact, I might even show more information than this little display. Storage is pretty good. You've got a couple of cup holders there, nice soft center armrest with heaps of storage on the inside, like genuinely a lot. Obviously we're in the left-hand drive version here, but it will be coming to Australia as right-hand drive. You have a wireless phone charger there as well, a little storage area too, and a couple of USB C ports, which is nice. The glove box is a massive size really really big and like I said in the boot you do get a Sennheiser sound system and Sennheiser as you guys know is a very good audio brand they make some of the most audiophile quality headphones out there so I'm really excited for when this does inevitably launch in Australia later this year to see how it sounds now you might be wondering Matt what the hell is the price going to be well we don't know for sure but speculation suggests that it will start somewhere between 70 and 73 thousand Australian dollars we don't know that for sure but that's our speculation which yes is more expensive than some rivals but actually places it pretty much in line with a Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive long range and considering the range you get in this and everything else that comes with it I actually think it might be pretty good value but you can let me know what you guys think down in the comment section if it comes out at that price at least for the rear wheel drive let's check out the back seats alrighty back seats Oh, that sounds really, really good. Even again for a pre-production model. So I'm five foot 11, sitting behind my driver's position, even though this doesn't have like a three meter wheelbase that you'd find in an Ionic 5N, for example, I still have heaps of leg room to room as well. It's really good. My legs are at a good angle, which can't be said of every EV and headroom as well is very good. Even with this uh, panoramic sunroof, which does look very, very nice indeed. Again, you get that ambient lighting in the back. It just looks so cool. It's multicolored as well. So you can change the zoning of it and just make it look sick, which I love. You've got some map pockets here. You've got a couple of air vents. You've also got a third zone of climate control, heated outboard seats, and a couple more USB C ports. You've also got this pull down center armrest with a couple of cup holders and a small one for an energy drink. You can pull that forward and have a ski pass through, which is always nice to see. Very European indeed. It just lets you put longer items through the car, which is just smart European design, baby. Look, I'm really, really impressed with the second row of the Taviscan. Is it any better than a Model Y? Well, in a lot of ways, it's very similar, but I think what this will do better than a current Model Y anyway is ride quality, but we'll have to wait and see. So that is it. That is the first look at the new Cupra Taviscan fully electric SUV coming to Australia. If you can even call this thing an SUV, it's more like a swoopy coopy hatchback. I really like this thing, at least on paper. We'll have to see how it drives, but if it comes out at the price, I'm thinking somewhere above 70K drive away for at least the rear wheel drive, the longer range endurance with 550 kilometers of WLTP, I think this thing will be pretty hard to beat. Even the all-wheel drive with its driving range of like 499 kilometers. It's actually quite impressive. But let me know what you guys think of the Cooper Taviscan down below. What do you think of the looks? Are you happy we get it at the same time as the Europeans finally? Because I know I am. Ciao for now.